Good evening. I feel like I should do a Vincent Price voice when I say that, but I'm not sure I can pull it off. So thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Janine McGowan, and this is the 50th floss tube that I have recorded. And I want to take a minute to thank you all for joining me. Those of you who have over this journey, it was so intimidating at the beginning and you've all been so welcoming and I have grown to really love the chance that I have to share time with you every few weeks on floss tube. So thank you all for helping me to make 50 floss tube videos. Now I did say good evening and that's because I usually film on Saturday mornings, but tomorrow morning we're having our windows cleaned. My son works for one of his uncles cleaning windows and pressure washing houses. So we're going to get to see his skills in action tomorrow morning, which means it's going to be a little bit loud here. And so I'm getting the video done the night before so I can have it nice and quiet in the morning and <laughs> help the dogs from getting too upset about all the noise. So. Jumping right into Stitching in Action, we have two wonderful submissions this time. First is Holly N, and this is the Spring Quail Biscornu. This was one of the pieces that I did for Quilter Station earlier this year. And for both Holly and I, it was our very first Biscornu finish. So it looks wonderful, Holly. Thank you for sharing. Good job. You're going to be a Biscornu pro from now on. You can see the beautiful Skyfall linen from Barbara All Creations that this one was stitched on, and also the lovely pins that Paola from Puntini Puntini did as part of the kit. Since it was quail and dogwood design, she did us bob white quail and dogwood and leaf pins to go with them. So thank you so much, Holly. It was lovely to meet you, and I'm really proud that your first Biscornu was one of my designs. So thank you for sharing that. Next up, we have Greyhound here. This is stitched by Lois W. I really love the frame that she chose. I think it brings out the colors perfectly. And she actually has a brand new Greyhound named Callie, who looks like the September dog in the piece. So thank you so much, Lois, for sharing that. As always, if you've stitched a blue flower design, go ahead and drop me a message. I'd love to see it and share it on the website. And if you are interested, in stitching a design but are thinking of different color options you know i always support that the website might be a good place in the stitching and action section for you to see what other people have done when they get drunk with power maybe i should change the name of that page but some people like to not be drunk and just do it the way that they want to do it so all right <laughs> what i'm stitching i continue to work on the pilsner memorial sampler this is the original design marianne mitten from Mary Wind Farm. It's very large, so I'm not holding it up anymore. I'm putting a picture in here, and you can see I've actually made it around the border. It's always such a relief when the border, well, I can't say it meets because I think I was off a couple threads, but you know, just tweaked the stems a little bit and it's fine. So now all I have to do is finish up filling in that top right border section which is nice because it's easy to do in the evenings after dinner when you don't have much time you don't even have to get the chart out just filling in leaves and flowers so i'm really really excited i'm a little sad that my border journey is ending all my wild color changes but i'm really excited to actually finish this this has been a really fun stitch i know i talk about it a lot i may not get much more done until after expo but uh yeah, if I finish up the border completely this week, that'll be a big deal. And then I'll be able to move on to some of the final bits and then send it off for the, the official Pilsner Memorial Sampler. Stash Spotlight, also on the theme of pets, is an unusual one. Teresa very kindly sent me this DMC chart called Greyhound from the Bodleian Library collection and I'm assuming it's related to it looks like a very medieval kind of illuminated manuscript border with a big open space in the middle. I love this and I'm going to put it up a little closer so you can see there are greyhounds in the edges there. They're just beautiful. It's quite large what 224 by 288 so very big. I was thinking I might try one time with 56 count linen to bring the size down a little bit but also because I kind of want to try it <laughs> so we'll see I may try it and decide I don't like it and go right back to 40 
but it's got a fairly open center area and I'm toying with whether I want to find a verse that I want to fill in that whole space or whether I want to add some of these Greyhound figures here but colored for each of the Greyhounds that we've had with their names and and dates or information there so yeah we'll have to see I'm not gonna start it until I finish with Pilsner but thank you so much Teresa what a fun thing I had no idea that DMC had done well historical reproduction things like this so learn something every day all right the world around since owl was the keyword for the giveaway from the last video of course there was a lot of chat about owls in the comments and owls have been on my mind so i've picked an owl that lives here in nevada year round and it is the short-eared owl so very unusual well unusual among owls in that it hunts mostly during the day because it primarily likes to eat voles and other small rodents who are active during the day. So you may see them at dawn and dusk. I know a couple of people in the comments with me were chatting about the fact that I hear owls much more than I ever see them because they're so well camouflaged and they tend to be out at night. The short-eared owl you might actually see because it hunts over the grassy areas and the marshlands looking for those little rodents. It's also unusual in that it's not incredibly vocal, but when it is calling, it sounds a little bit like a cat. And I looked up some videos online and sure enough, it does sound a bit like a, a squawky cat <laughs> prowling through the back fences looking for some trouble, some love, some whatever. So. Who knows, I might have thought I was hearing a cat all this time and actually been hearing a short-eared owl. They also have different plumage in different areas, which is not surprising, lots of birds do. There's one from Hawaii that looks to me very cuddly. And then the one from the Galapagos, I'm putting pictures in of both of these, looks very much more fierce. <laughs> so I don't know how fierce they are as owls. They're not terrifically large for owls but they do hunt rodents, so they're not tiny. And they also, like killdeer, will try and lure predators away from their nests by mimicking injury, which is, I think that's a pretty fierce thing to do. But before they leave the nest, apparently they will poop on their eggs to make them much less attractive. I have not tried that method of parenting, and I'm sure everyone in our house is grateful that we don't do it that way. So the short-eared owl. I need to get suggestions one of these times and, and let the winner pick the animals because there are so many wonderful animals for the world around or plants or natural features that I need to make sure I'm bringing some of those in. So keep an eye out. If you've got one that you'd really like to see done, drop it into the comments and, and maybe that's the one we'll do next time. Questions. Last video, the question was your end of summer rituals. I know it seems a little weird to be talking about the end of summer since it is, in fact, still quite warm, but definitely seeing shorter days. We're seeing a little bit of crisp in the air in the morning, which is, oh, I love it. I love that feeling. I really do. And uh, so, yeah, I got lots of great feedback. Lots of people mentioned going to the beach, enjoying wonderful food, having camping rituals with their family, things like that. So thank you all for sharing those question for you this video i know we have a little garden and we talk a lot about our little garden but it's because it's so wonderful and i think one of the best things about summer at this time is just the abundance of fresh produce so i was wondering what your favorite thing is this time of year i know we've really enjoyed going out to the backyard and getting tomatoes and cucumbers and herbs just right there on demand and that's a real treat for us but I think my favorite produce for this time of year is all the stone fruit. I love nectarines, peaches, plums, all of it. I could pretty much eat just stone fruit for about a month. So I'm really enjoying this time of year. And I'd love to hear from you what your favorite food is for this time of year. Now, of course, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's going to be a little bit different. But let me know what is really, really delicious for you right now best thing this video I have a new design in punch needle and primitive stitcher continuing on the collective nouns first off in spring you may remember a wisdom of wombats and then in the summer issue we had a parade of elephants there we go 
for fall, I did a glaring of cats. There are lots of words to describe groups of cats, but a glaring is one of my favorites, and it's because cats are so very good at glaring. It's a little bit hard to see. I'll see if I can get better in there, but I actually had trouble with the design getting them to look as though they were in fact angry. <laughs> and it turns out eyebrows <laughs> were the key. So I think I got them sufficiently glaring. If you pick up the Autumn Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, I've got a couple different colors of cats, so it makes it easy to customize and you can have your very own glaring of cats. All right, on to giveaway. Last video, it was four winners using the word owl, and you can pick any one of my designs, including the new ones, as a prize. The four winners are Nana's Mom, Diane Flowers, M. Spaulding, and Sharon Worm. So go ahead and send me an email with your address or drop me a message in the comments so I can find that and get that out to you. Let me know which chart you'd like, and thank you so much for your comments. This time, all of the talk about owls has put me in the mood of, I guess, owls on the brain. So I thought I'd do an owl forest embroidery kit. And this one has, it looks like Neptune on a giant sturgeon, which also kind of fits with the end of summer beachy theme. It's a little bit hard to get all the way up, but there you go. There's the picture. Probably as good as it's going to get right now. But as always with the owl forest kits, comes with fabric. You can see here a nice needle minder. In this case, it looks like it's a sturgeon right there. And then it's a little bit hard to see because they don't attach them. They just are clipped in case you wanted to use their thread drops. Let's see if I can hold that up there. But look at those beautiful colors. And the thread drops are marked with the symbols, so it makes it easy. They're, they just do a really good job with kits always. So that's the prize. Use the word fish in your comments to win the Owl Forest Embroidery Kit of the man on the giant sturgeon. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Not a lot of announcements really going on. We have a quiet weekend. We're getting obviously the windows washed tomorrow. And we spend a lot of our time right now following Rye around. She was ruckusing in the yard and managed to cut one of her legs. And greyhounds are so thin skinned. And they don't have any fur that little cuts tend to be more of a big deal than they would for a lot of other dogs. So she had to get a couple of stitches, which means either she has to wear the cone, which is really stressful for her, or we have to watch her to make sure she's not picking at her stitches. So that's what we're doing this weekend. That's why there are gates behind me so that she can't get anywhere by herself and start nibbling away. But uh, yeah, that's my weekend. I'm going to pack charts for Expo. I'm going to drool over all the wonderful new designs from the other designers. And I'm going to watch her eye and remind her not to nibble on her stitches. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I'm sorry I won't get to see you tomorrow morning, but you can wake up and watch the video without me. And again, thank you all for 50 episodes and for giving me the courage to take this leap and the opportunity to connect with all of you puppy video at the end, and I hope you enjoy it. Talk to you in two weeks. Bye.